Oh, hi there, target audience of 18 to 24 year olds in the key counterculture demographics. This video will cover the eight must have Magic the Gathering cards in white for Commander. But first, do you know what else is a must have? Why, it's radical ear tubes for listening to your tunes with. And there's nothing more on fleck than the Raycon wireless earbuds, sponsor of this video. Yes, what better person to pay money to help sell wireless earbuds developed by rap artist William Raymond Norwood Jr. than a middle-aged former professor of English who reviews the equivalent of pocket protectors for your nerdy cardboard. There is no one better, said Raycon, and then signed the contract which they can no longer back out of. Just go to buyraycon.com forward slash Tolarian community to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's right, I am so hip and with it that my viewers are being given 15% off just for using my special link. Raycon earbuds already start at half the price of other brands, sound just as good, but hey, here's another 15% off of that. I love using mine to listen to such contemporary music artists as... Kanye, and I want to say Jabrizi? That's someone, right? Jabrizi. And also Cheryl Crow? The latest model, the E25, is the best one yet, with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise-isolating fit. As Rihanna once said to all the single men, if you love it, then you better put a ring on it. Well, if you are looking for wireless earbuds, then click the link, see the low pricing, and give thoughtful consideration as to whether this is the product you wish to purchase. Uh, uh, oh, oh yeah, uh, uh, oh. This video will cover the top eight most run cards in white for Commander. Remember, this is not a secret list of underplayed cards, but rather a look at the most universal and awesome cards in white for the format. So again, I am trying to create an all-purpose list of the eight cards that, if you are in white, be it mono white or five color Ur Dragon, you are probably going to want to run, or at least strongly consider. That means that these aren't super secret tech. They are essentially broad, generic picks for the color because they are the must haves. And I have tried to ensure that they are must haves for just about any deck and strategy. So no, I am not mentioning Anointed Procession, because if you are not doing much or anything with tokens, then there's no need to run this card, even though if you are in white and are doing stuff with tokens, then yes, it is a must run, but not every deck needs it. What are the top eight cards that every deck in white does need. Well, let's start with an honorary mention for the white win con that pretty much should go in just about any commander deck running the color, and that is Approach of the Second Sun. Approach of the Second Sun is six generic and one white for a sorcery. If this spell was cast from your hand and you've cast another spell named Approach of the Second Sun this game, you win the game. Otherwise, put Approach of the Second Sun into its owner's library seventh from the top, and you gain seven life. Look, you can play Commander how you want and build your decks how you want, but it's important to have built-in win cons into your decks so that you can, you know, end games. Now, whether this is just for Mono White, which quite frankly, if you are running Mono White Commander, then a built-in win con like this is especially important, or if it is a multicolor deck where you can plan a faster combo win, such as using a draw spell like Dig Through Time, or getting really clever like remanding your own approach of the Second Sun, or many, many other options, approach is just one of the best cards available. Best of all, thanks in no small part to its recent Mystery Booster reprint, the card is just under a dollar each. And I just can't see why you would not want to run a copy in your deck. Ah, but hey, win cons in Commander are like favorite episodes of Doctor Who. It's a personal thing. 
What about the eight cards that really stand hand and shoulders above the rest in their respective roles? Must runs, whether you're in mono white or three color Esper. Coming in at number eight is a befittingly formal modal spell, the Austere Command. Austere Command is four generic and double white for a sorcery where you may choose two. Destroy all artifacts, destroy all enchantments, destroy all creatures with converted mana cost three or less, or destroy all creatures with converted mana cost four or greater. Yes, the spell itself is costly, but choosing two from such a long list gives us extreme situational flexibility that other cards just lack. With the Steer Command, you won't get caught holding artifact removal in a situation where when what you really need is creature removal, or you won't get caught having to wipe your entire board of your little army of two drops just to get rid of your opponent's big bad high mana sweepers. The command works to be almost all things to almost all situations. And especially if we're just talking about a one or two color commander deck, it makes this a must run. Coming in at number seven is our answer to not only the lack of land, ramp, and acceleration in white, but also a card that helps us keep up with opponents who do have these things. Without, you might find games to be quite taxing, and so be sure to run a copy of Land Tax. Land Tax is a single white for an enchantment that reads, at the beginning of your upkeep, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you may search your library for up to three basic land cards, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. So obviously this doesn't let you match your land ramp opponents drop for drop, but in any commander game where a green player is reaching for extra land drops like clockwork, land tax at least allows you to pull lands from your deck keeping your land drops on turn consistent and also providing some potentially significant filtering in terms of card draw. I mean, it helps you keep up with your opponents when you run cards like Terrain Generator, but either way, I love that this card also grabs basics in other colors, not just planes, so that even in a tri-color deck, land tax is a fine card to have. And at only one white, it's hardly taxing on your mana to cast and keep. Let's talk creatures. Now, white has always been famous for low-cost, efficient creatures that can jump ahead of the competition and bring extreme value relative to their cost. But at number six, I thought it best to look at the best white six drop. Our very own answer to the Commander Classic Eternal Witness, that card is Sun Titan. Sun Titan is some Titan at four generic and double white for a giant with vigilance. And whenever Sun Titan enters the battlefield or attacks, you may return target permanent card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard, not to hand, but to the battlefield. As I said, I look at this card as essentially our version of Eternal Witness in white. No, it's not the exact same effect, but you get graveyard recursion for three or less, and best of all, it works for both flicker and bounce effects, as well as when Titan attacks. The number of decks and the number of possibilities that build combos and synergies around Sun Titan are too numerous to list. I could honestly do an entire video just about Sun Titan combos, and I'd still only be scratching the surface. From something simple like recurring a Seal of Cleansing or Seal of Doom, to getting clever and complex by making use of Titan and Sterling Grove, or just going infinite with any number of out-of-control commander synergies, such as Safi Eric's daughter. Either way, Sun Titan works wonders in almost every design, and it's a must-run in your white commander deck. And I know I'll always have one in mine. Question, what's the best mono-white tutor in this game's entire history? There's many to choose from and many permutations within. But out of all of those, sticking to mono white means an enlightened attitude and us running an enlightened tutor as a result. Enlightened tutor, simple, elegant, refined, a single white for an instant, search your library for an artifact or enchantment card, reveal that card, shuffle your library, then put the card on top of it. Yes, this is limiting in that it's only grabbing an enchantment or an artifact. 
but in white, those are often our most critical cards. And white isn't exactly built for tutors, with most very expensive and very restrictive in either their targets or the conditions of their tutor ship. When we look through the library of white tutors, we see that most of them already only grab enchantments or auras. And yes, there's exceptions, like the rangers that can grab creatures, but the restriction they have of the mana cost needing to only be one. And while there's a few variations in between, between, overall, white tutors are very situational. And the one that covers the most situations for the least cost is definitely Enlightened Tutor. The only other real consideration here is perhaps the recently reprinted Idyllic Tutor, which certainly saves time by putting the card directly into hand, though it won't hit artifacts and it costs three times as much. As such, the best and most must-have of white tutors remains the one white mana costed and much more flexible Enlightened Tutor. All right, we've covered Tutors, Graveyard Recursion, Land search and modal spells. What's next in the list of optimal white cards that belong in your commander deck? How about wrath effects? Here's where white shines. Hey, we all know that the best villains are in white mana, and wow, do they love to wrath. One of the most must-have effects for commander. And of them all, the best white wrath is the classic. We're going Old Testament here. Wrath of God. Wrath of God is too generic and double white for a sorcery. Destroy all creatures. They can't be regenerated. Well, there you have it, folks. White has a potent plethora of wrath effects to choose from, such as Fumigate, which gains us life, but costs one mana more, and Day of Judgment, which is strictly worse, as creatures can still regenerate. Marshall Q has always been a favorite of mine, and would probably be my number two pick, as if you do have seven mana available, or more, then you're going to end up with creatures on board while everyone else is just wiped away. But between all of these, four mana without possibility of regeneration is just Ops. Thus, Wrath of God is the most must-run Wrath effect in white. What about those situations where you don't want to wipe the board, but would rather just pick off one specific threat? Well, Exile is another thing that white excels at, and while there's many permutations to choose from, among them, the classic is still the best. Going all the way back to my own high school days for number three, it's Swords to Plowshares. Swords to Plowshares, it's a single white for an instant exile target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its power. This hits anything that can be targeted and gets rid of it forever. Deceptively powerful. Back in those old high school days, I remember myself often asking the question, why would I want my opponent to gain life? Well, the answer, of course, is that you don't win games by gaining life. You win games by casting and keeping threats. So to get rid of a threat in exchange for a small gift of life is why Swords to Plowshares is the best spot removal in white. If you need a few more spots for spot removal, some cards to consider might be Path to Exile, a modern staple, and I'm quite fond of the newly created Generous Gift. Now I can see some decks running up to all three of these, in three colors even. But even in five colors, it's hard to cut swords, the most must run of the bunch. All right, we're down to the top two most must run cards in white for Commander. Whatever you have thought about the previous picks, these next two are the ones I sincerely state that if you are in white, they simply must, must be a part of your deck. Coming in at number two, it's the emergency panic button that answers wipes and so many other game-ending situations, and that protection is Teferi's protection. Teferi's protection is too generic in a white for an instant that reads, until your next turn, your life total can't change and you have protection from everything. All permanents you control phase out, meaning while they're phased out, they're treated as though they don't exist. They phase in before you untap during your untap step. Exile to Fairy's Protection. I was not kidding when I said this was an emergency button for Commander. Whatever wrath effect is taking place, whatever board destruction or targeted attack even. One push of the Teferi's Protection button and you not only live to see another turn, but given the resulting chaos that might be left in your wake, you might just phase back in to being clearly on top. But protection is not just for protection, with many players able to engineer their own win-con strategies around a 
essentially dropping an end-of-world effect and then quickly phasing out to avoid getting hit. The spell is life-saving and potentially part of game-ending plays. And while a costly real-world price, I feel it is even costlier to be in white and not under Teferi's protection. Now, number one is actually a fairly recent addition to what is now the Commander Classics. It's grown in popularity and strength with good reason, as its success will have your opponents drowning in your power. Or, dare I say it, smothered by? <laughs> That's right. The number one must-run card in white for Commander. It's Smothering Tithe. Smothering Tithe is three generic and a white for an enchantment that reads, whenever an opponent draws a card, that player must pay two. If the player doesn't, you create a treasure token, which is an artifact that you can tap to sacrifice and add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So step one, resolve Tithe early game. Step two, create treasure tokens like gangbustas. Step three, profit? There's no convoluted confusion here. You'll end up so far ahead of everyone at the table after only a few rounds with Smothering Tithe in play. And your opponents are going to find it hard to answer your Scrooge McDuck levels of treasure-based mana. Smothering Tithe takes particular pleasure in the fact that Commander has you up against three or more other opponents, each at least drawing one card per turn, oftentimes drawing far, far more. Your mana reserves, therefore, accelerate at a rapid pace, and your payoffs, be they complex combos or just powerful creatures, rise with each new treasure created. Without a doubt, Smothering Tithe is the most must-run card in all of white for Commander, regardless of your Commander deck. But now I want to hear from you. What white Commander cards do you consider to be must-runs and why? Who's your favorite white Commander? And are there any in just the mono color? Let me know in the comments below. Special thanks again to Raycon for helping bring you this video. Remember, go to buyraycon.com forward slash Talarian community to get 15% off off your Raycon order. It's jabreziest. I'm relatable. In fact, Popper Burn is the closest thing to a legit legacy deck that you can play in Popper. And the core of this burn deck, of course, lies in its burn spells. Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning, Lava Spike, Searing Blaze, Rift Bolt, and Fire Blast. These are the bread and butter of the burn deck and generally appear as full four ofs.